this module, um, we will be actually trying to talk about uh, the different categories of users and the different uh, 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 types of permissions that Unix recognizes um, for effectively protecting or allowing the data to be seen by the different categories of users. So, coming down to the different types of files, uh, file access rights that uh, the Unix allows, um, there are three types of access rights. Uh, one what is called as a read access, another is a write access, another is execute access. Uh, so, essentially um, the Unix being a multi user operating system, you will have to have a mechanism by which the OS is informed about what kind of uh, access privileges a particular file can be given to the different type of users. So, it tries to have three different types of access and also three different types of access levels for different types of users, right. So, the three types of access rights uh, as we see it as we just uh, discussed right now are read, write and execute. Now, coming down to the three different types of uh, access level, Unix recognizes the first level is what is called as a user. Uh, so, that typically means whoever is the current owner of the file. So, um, every file has a owner who is actually associated with that particular file and the second level of access is basically what is called as a group. So, each user is actually mapped to a group of users uh, in such a way that it, they all together form a logical group. So, taking an example, if an organization uh, typically having an administration department, a finance department, an engineering department, a marketing department, a user who is actually a, uh, an administrator uh, does not have any requirement or any uh, rights to view a engineering related document, right. So, in that kind of a scenario, that particular user will be part of the administrator group, but that user will not be part of the engineering group. Right? So, this is basically what the, the group access level in Unix typically stands for. Then there is a third access level called as others. Now, what does this others mean? So, apart from the group to which this particular uh, file has been given or this particular user has, is belonging to, everybody else on the system right, will be fitted in into the others category. So, now the others category is not general or common for everybody in the system for or for every file, it will be dependent on the user plus the group details. So, everybody who is not a user and everybody who is not a is not a part of the group will all be considered as part of being others, right. So, within these three buckets, one user, the second is a group, third is everybody else, uh, you will have the entire set of access levels uh, uh, fitted in as far as a Unix operating system is concerned. In some literature, you will also find the word universe used in place of the others that we are talking of here. So, if at all you find that somebody uh, is referring to an access level as universe, uh, please do not get confused, they are actually trying to denote or mean what we are talking of as others in this context, right. So, you will typically find uh, uh, three different access rights given, one which is read, another which is write, another which is execute. These three different access rights are given for the three categories of users, one which is a user that is the owner, the basic owner of that particular file, second is basically the group, the third will basically the others. Now, what are the different type of constraints that are there? Um, if you really have the X permission, X permission being the execute permission. Um, given to the binaries, right. Uh, that will be more than sufficient for the binaries to be actually getting executed, but for shell scripts uh, that we will be looking at uh, in our subsequent modules, you will find that you require both read and execute to be given, right. Now, the next constraint that we will need to remember is, both R and X permissions are needed in practice for directories. R is required, the read permission is basically required to list the contents of the directory and X is basically required to access the contents of the directory. So, as we were seeing in our previous uh, module, a directory is also nothing but 
a special type of a file and the contents of directory are typically uh, consisting of a list of files inside that. So, if I want to list the uh, contents for the directory, I would typically need to have the read permission to it and if I want to access the contents within the directory, I need to have the X permission for that. right? Now, the next constraint that we will have to remember is, I cannot really rename, remove or copy files in a directory if you do not have write access to this directory. Now, why is this a constraint? So, let us come from this uh, from the back side. So, we are saying write access to the directory is not there. Now, what do we mean when we say write access to this directory is not there? Directory is nothing but a set of list of files uh, uh, inside the directory. So, essentially uh, if I really try to find out what the contents of the directory are, it is going to be basically containing the entire set of uh, subdirectories and files that is present in the directory. Now, if I try to let us say copy a file in the directory to another file in the same directory, what should happen to the contents of the directory? The contents of the directory should be getting updated. right? Now, if I do not have write access to this particular directory, how will the contents of that directory will be getting updated? It will not be possible for which I need a write access to the directory, right? because the directory uh, is basically the list of uh, contents within that. If I am going to copy a file or create a new file name or whatever it is, uh, which is basically what all these three operations are going to do, uh, I need to have the right permission for that particular directory without which I will not be able to do any of these kind of modification operations. Right? Now, the next, uh, next constraint which we will have to understand is, if I have right access to a directory, I can go ahead and remove a file even if I do not have the right access to the file name. Right? Now, why is this? Again, as we were discussing in the last bullet point, if I have to uh, do any kind of modifications in the directory, uh, if I uh, as I have given in this particular case, uh, if a file has to be removed, what it essentially means is that particular file name has to be taken out as part of being the directory contents. right? So, as long as I have the right permission to that particular directory, with which I will be able to remove the file name from the directory contents, I will be able to go ahead and delete a file, remove a file in that, in that sense, uh, even if I do not have the right permission on that particular file. So, some examples, um, if you look at for, for the detailed output of the ls command, basically the long listing. right? Um, you will find that there are a first set of characters that is actually present here, uh, which talks about uh, different permissions along with the type of the file. So, for the time being uh, ignore the first hyphen that you see there. right? Uh, subsequent to that you have read write followed by the hyphen. Now, what does this read write followed by the hyphen actually means is, uh, like you have here. So, it is read permission, write permission and no execute permission for the user that is the owner. right? So, the first three set of permissions the rights are basically specified for the owner of the file. The next three per, uh, permissions are basically set for the group for the file. The, the last three permissions are basically set for everybody else. right? So, essentially this means that readable and writable by the file owner readable for the other group members and readable for everybody else. right? So, here again readable and writable for the owner, readable for the users uh, belonging to that fi particular file group, belonging to that particular group, but since for everybody else it is all dashes that means the others do not have a read or a write or a execute permission at all. right? So, now look at this, the first character is basically marked as a D. So, the D here stands for that particular entry is actually a directory entry. So, this particular directory is accessible by for read and write and execute by the owner alone. Okay? 
and everything else. So, there is no read write execute for the group and there is no read write execute for all others in the system. Okay. So, look at this another very funny example. So, if, if, if I basically give the permissions like this, it essentially means that the owner cannot do anything, the group of users to which the owner is belonging, they also cannot do anything, right? but everybody else can sort of read and execute the file. right? So, generally this kind of thing is not used, but uh, this example has been cited to show that even this kind of permission is possible to be given uh, for any kind of uh, a file uh, on Unix. So, having given a file uh, um, a permission, how do I change the permission to be uh, something else? So, that command that I use for that is basically ch mode. Right? So, ch mode essentially means change the mode of operation. So, the first argument to it is basically what permissions and the second argument to be it is basically what is the list of files. So, either it could be a single file or a directory or it could be a set of files uh, uh, in a directory. Right? Now, I have two forms of representing the permissions. So, I could actually give it in the way by which I specify the number. So, the read permission has got 4, the write permission has got 2 and execute permission has got 1. So, if I basically want to say that uh, I want to give read write for user, so read and write put together 4 plus 2 will become 6. If I say that I want to give only read for the group, that means I will specify only 4 and then I want to specify read for the other also, I will specify 4 for the others also. right? So, if I specify ch mode 644 followed by the file name, the given file that I have here will get the permission for read and write of the user for the uh, user or the owner, read permission for the group and then read permission for everybody else. right? On the other hand, instead of giving this number, I can also specify in this form where I could say ch mode go plus r. What it means is that for the group and for the others, I want to give the read permission. So, I want to add the read permission. For the user, I, if it is specified as u minus w, then it will be for removing the write permission for the user. And then um, if I say, say a minus x, it will be for removing the execute permission for everybody else. So, a stands for all. So, all here would include the user, the group as well as for all others. So, we have the uh, permissions of this uh, readme file as read write for the owner, read write for uh, the group and only read for everybody else. So, if I for example want to give permission of 755, so 755 would essentially say that the owner can do read write execute, the uh, uh, the group can the group can do read and execute, the others can do read and execute, it will appropriately change the permissions to be like this. So, if you see here, it says R w x right now when x was not there because the, the, the number 7 has been used there. So, 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1 that is read plus write plus execute. Phi so means read and execute 4 plus 1 and again the next phi here means read and execute. right? So, if you see that uh, the permissions has got appropriately changed in this manner. So, if I want to do a recursively uh, 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 change for all the contents of a particular directory, then I basically try to use the minus capital R option. So, minus capital R will recursively change the contents of whatever permissions that has been specified uh, in the entire directory that has been given as an argument. So, the contents of the, the Linux directory uh, even if it has subdirectories inside, all of that will be recursively changed to whatever permissions has been specified as the first argument to the ch mode command. Now, if I want to change the ownership of the file, uh, I will use the ch own command. So, ch own stands for change ownership and uh, if I say minus r, again the minus r will be recursive here. So, all the contents whether it is a subdirectory or the file 
in slash home slash Linux slash SRC will be changed to SEO as the current owner irrespective of whoever is the current owner. So, one thing to note here is that this particular command can be run only by the current owner of the file which is actually getting changed or it could be run as the super user. Super user means the root user in the Linux world. right? So, similarly if I want to change the group I could run the ch group com crp command which actually stands for change group. So, again minus r will change recursively to the empire group all the uh, files and the subdirectories available in this particular uh, argument that has been given here. Now, if I want to change both the owner and the group at the same time, I can say chown um, and if I want to use it recursively, I can specify minus r and in this case just observe we have specified the new owner name colon the new group name. right? So, recursively all the entries that are there in this particular location will be getting changed, the owner will be getting changed for all those entries to the first uh, string here that has been given and the group will be getting changed to the second string that has been given after the colon delimiter in the first argument. right? So, the, the CHO could also be used to change the group in this manner in a single shot. So, root is basically a very privileged user uh, in the Linux operating system uh, just like we have an administrator user in the Windows operating system wherein when a process or when a command is being run by this root user all kinds of authentication checks or permission checks will never be done by the OS. So, because of this fact uh, we need to be very very careful uh, whenever we are trying to run any command as a root user and typically the root command will be used only in a kind of a training session uh, wherein uh, even if anything happens in the system it could it, it will not have a very great damage, but in a real time production system uh, you will generally not have root access and even if you have root access we need to be very very careful about what you do uh, with the root access because it could be potentially damaging uh, for a simple reason that the OS does not do any kind of a validation or authentication check when some command or process is being run by the root user. So, if I basically want to use the root uh, uh, user how I go how I can typically go about is I could use a su command uh, without any option wherein I will be switching the user uh, to the root user and uh, when I try to run this command it will ask me for the password for the root user and only after the password is successfully given. Uh, I will be able to switch to the, the root user privileges. right? On the other hand uh, in quite a few modern distributions including all distributions flavors of Linux you also have the sudo command uh, that is available uh, which actually gives you the, the super user privileges in a very temporary manner just for running only one command as a super user. So, in this case if I say sudo uh, run the mount command, so mount command is a privileged command that I would not be able to run as a normal user and I need super user privileges for that I would say sudo mount uh, followed by whatever arguments are required for it. So, just for running this particular command alone the OS will treat me as a normal uh, as a as a super user instead of as a, a normal uh, non privileged user on the system. Thank you.